Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto unlocks Magicum Shuringen, Naruto x Fu part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Rookie 14 link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. October 10th, the day that would leave a lasting impression among the people of the Hidden Leaf. October 10th, the day the Nine Tails Fox would raise hell among Kanoha. Hundreds of lives would be lost that night, but among those losses would be the rise of two new lives. Though in order to understand this tale, you must first understand what happened on October 10th, the day the Kyubi attacked. In a cave not too far from the village was a group of shinobi. Outside of the cage stood a small group of Anbu, guarding the people inside. Inside the cave was a redeated woman, who was known as Kashina Namikis, and to a selected few the second Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox. Kashina was in complete agony, as she was close to giving birth. To her side stood the Yandame Hokage, keeping the Nine Tails in check. The Yandame Hokage, aka Minato Namikis, looked at his wife with distress. The woman delivering the babies, Buwako Saratobi, merely shook her head at Minato's antics. Men thought of the wife of the third Hokage, as she concentrated on the task at hand. What? The crying of the first baby rang through the room. A small red-headed boy was in the arms of Buwako. Buwako passed the boy to her assistant, and went right back to work. Then a few moments later the sound of the second baby rang through the room. What? Minato looked at the children with renewed happiness, and he quickly looked back down to his wife. Minato could see the large smile on his wife's pained face then in the blink of an eye everything changed. Blind. The village hidden in the leaf was near complete destruction. An enormous hole was found in the village's outer walls. The place where the third Hokage had forced the Kyubi out. The village itself was practically in shambles, while portions of it were completely the village walls a large portion of the forest was completely gone. In this clearing stood several shinobi, and among those shinobi stood the third Hokage. His eyes wide, as he just witnessed the Kyubi disappear, where did it go? An enormous light that illuminated the night could be seen in the distance. Lang. Snake boar am rabbit dog rat bird horse snake. Minato finished the last seal, and clapped his hands together clap. A giant apparition appeared behind Minato. The apparition wore a long white cloak, and he had long white suddenly Minato's soul appeared at the hands of the apparition. Minato's eye twitched, as he muttered the jutsu's name, Shakifujin. Minato looked to his left, and looked at his severely injured wife. Kashina was kneeled to a ceiling shrine, where their newborn twins lay. Minato narrowed his eyes, as they were quickly filled with determination. Turning forward he glared at the Nine Tails, who was being held down by Kashina's chakra chains. Minato formed a hand seal, and the Death God struck his hand through Minato's back. The Death God's hand entered Minato, and used his body as a medium. Then suddenly the same hand exploded from Minato's stomach, and latched onto the nine tails. Minato gritted his teeth, I'll see the yin half into Mido, and then I'll seal the other half into Mino, I must seal it into Naruto. Minato looked at his two children. They must be the two to stop Madara the Jinchurikus of the nine-tailed fox. Minato looked forward, and he directed the death god's hand to rip away the yin half of the nine tails. In a quick motion the hand of the death god did exactly that. Minato watched, as the nine tails shrunk in size, and he quickly moved to seal away the yin cried Mido, as the yin was sealed into her. Minato wasted no time, and moved to seal away the second half. He grabbed onto the remaining half of the nine tails, and proceeded to seal it into Naruto. Then all at once Minato's body froze, and he watched, as the hand kept moving. What are you doing? shouted Minato, as he managed to tilt his head towards the Shinigami. Kashina had heard Minato's shout, and turned to face him. Kashina's eyes widened in shock, as she felt the excruciating pain of having the nine tails resealed into her. A hole was ripped in the clothes of Kashina, and in that hole her stomach was revealed to the whole world. The eight sign seal appeared on her stomach, and Kashina's eyes rolled into the back of her head. Minato watched in torment, as his wife fell into a state of unconsciousness. Minato felt himself regain control of his body, and he fell to his knees. Minato looked behind him, and stared at the Shinigami in disbelief. What's the meaning of this? You are a fortunate mortal, today I've decided to help you scum known, as humans. spoke the death god. Minato's eyes widened in shock, as he hadn't expected a response, what why? The death god gave him a devilish grin, the time has drawn near, the child to complete the prophecy is near. Though in order for that agenda to occur, things need to occur. I usually don't mess around with mortal affairs, but I'll make this exception. Minato asked, prophecy? Are you talking about the child of prophecy? The death god stood still, and Minato watched, as his soul was returned into his body. In order for the prophecy to occur you must live. But do not think you have cheated death, mortal. Your soul will eventually be mine, but do remember my words. Minato's eyes closed, and his hearing suddenly became dull. The release of the head quickly sent him into unconsciousness. Disabling him from hearing the death god's last words. You will become your son's greatest pain. The death god looked over to the boy, and wasn't surprised to see the boy's eyes. Even though he's so young, he's unconsciously able to feel me. 
could he finally be the one? The death god silently disappeared from the area. His eyes never leave the small child. And now our story begins. Time skip 8 years. The young red-haired boy could be seen peeking out the window. His gaze remained frozen on a pair of people in his backyard. The boy put himself into a better position, and thus revealing more of his body to the outside world. The boy stood quite tall for his age at a height of 311. He had short spiky red hair, and with the whisker marks on his cheek. It gave the boy a ferocious look. But his bright blue eyes were abnormal to his looks. Compared to the rest of his features, his eyes were the things that stood out the most for the boy. The boy stared intently at the group trying to memorize every little detail he could. Out of his backyard stood the Yandame Hokage, and a young blonde haired girl. The Redeed watched, as the child attempted to run up the tree, but quickly fell off. A frown was placed on the boy's face, as he watched the man catch her, and they both laughed. Naruto shook his head, and turned away from his window. He walked quickly to his dresser, and opened up a drawer. He pulled out a kunai, and slammed the drawer shut. Unintentionally he caused the pictures on top of his dresser to fall over. The boy sighed, as he reached out to pick the things out. The first thing he picked up was a wooden block with a name on it. Naruto Namikis. The boy gave his name a quick glance, and placed it onto his dresser. He picked up a picture, and stared at it. It was a picture of him with a beautiful blonde woman. The title under it read. Gramitsunade. Naruto moved over, and picked up two more. One picture he was much younger, and was sitting on an old man's lap with the blonde girl. Old man Hokage. Naruto looked at the third picture. A masked shinobi with a silver hat stood by Naruto. His hand was messing up Naruto's hair, but Naruto was still smiling in the picture. Takashi. Naruto picked up the last picture. It was a picture with him, and the blonde girl. Behind them stood Minato, and Kashina. Family Pie. Naruto didn't read the rest, as he slammed the picture face down onto the drawer. Naruto quietly opened his door, and moved silently through the hall. As he reached the end of it, he stopped to peek around the corner. Naruto glanced into the kitchen to see his mother preparing a meal. Naruto looked down at his kunai. If he tell her what I'm- Naruto frowned, as he thought back to why all this was happening. Flashback no jutsu one year ago. It was early morning in Kanoha, and Naruto sat fully awake at the breakfast table. To his side sat Mido who was sleeping on the table, and Minato was sitting across from them. Plates and chopsticks were set for each of them. Naruto took a deep breath, as he waited for his mom to enter the room. To this day I asked mom and dad to help train me too. They've been training Mido for a month, and I think it's time for me too. Naruto smiled, as he thought about the things he could be learning. He was about to let out a childish giggle, when he saw his mom enter the kitchen. He quickly eyed his father, who was busy reading, and straightened himself up, trying to look as mature as possible. Dad? Mom? In an innocent voice. Minato and Kashina both looked up, and looked at each other. One thought ran through their heads, he wants something. Kashina gave Naruto a questioning look, what is it, Naruto? Naruto sweated a bit under his mother's look, she already knows I want something. Minato brushed Kashina off, Kashina lessened that look, you're going to scare him off. Kashina glared at Minato, I'm not scaring him off. Mom? Dad? Can I talk? Interrupted Naruto. Kashina and Minato looked at Naruto. Minato smiled, what is Naruto? Well, I was wondering. Naruto twirled his fingers a bit, if you could start teaching me the ninja arts like Mido. Mido was suddenly wide awake, and listened to Naruto's conversation. Kashina and Minato both raised an eyebrow. Minato gave Naruto a patient look, Naruto, we've already told you why I started training Mido early. Naruto nodded, it's because she's the Nine Tails in Shuriki, and she needs extra help controlling her chakra. Naruto looked up with determination, I know that, but I promise I won't be a burden. You just have to teach me once, and I swear I'll manage to figure things out on my own. You would even have to waste that much time with me. I promise. Minato sighed, that's not how Naruto works. When teaching young children like you to use chakra, you need a lot of attention. Due to my Hokage duties I don't have much time to teach you. In fact it's usually your mother who teaches Mido, and she needs to have all her focus on Mido. Naruto's eyes were slowly beginning to fill up with disappointment, but dad. No, but dad. Replied Kashina, you heard your father. Kashina walked over to Naruto, and placed her hands on his shoulder. Once you enter the academy, you'll learn how to wield your chakra there. Naruto's eyes suddenly lit up with an idea, then why don't you let me join now? They could probably teach me how to use my chakra. Kashina sighed, cause you don't have to enter until you're 9. Since all they teach you at your age is the basics of reading, writing, and history. We teach you that already. Naruto finally frowned, then why can't I just enter now? I already know all that, I'm sure I could just skip ahead. Kashina looked over to Minato, and Minato frowned. They knew that already, but Kashina and Minato didn't want their children to grow up so fast. They themselves had seen the horrors of war at their children's age. Kashina's temper finally got the best of her, I said no, and that's final. Naruto shut his eyes in anger, but he did nothing. 
Kashina and Minato looked at each other and shared a sigh. Mito merely gazed at her brother not uttering a word. Flashback no jutsu release one year ago. Naruto took a deep breath and ran to the door, Mom, I'm going to the park. Kashina looked behind her, what? Though before she knew what was happening, Naruto was already out the door. Kashina sighed, he better not be late for dinner. Blind. Naruto stood in a clearing near the park. The spot was secluded, so no one else could see what he was doing. Naruto stared at the tall thick tree he had picked. From what I was seeing, Mido was using her chakra to walk up the tree. Naruto took a deep breath. I am correct, I must direct the flow of chakra to my feet in order to walk up the tree. Naruto formed a hand seal and closed his eyes to concentrate. Gather the chakra to my feet. Naruto opened his eyes and pulled out the kunai he grabbed earlier. Then he swiftly ran up to the tree and started running up the tree. Naruto took three steps and he grinned, I'm doing it. Snap. Only three feet off the ground, Naruto heard the breaking of bark. Naruto quickly looked down to his feet. Then he suddenly realized he was upside down and falling to the ground. Thump. Naruto's head slammed into the ground and Naruto fell to his side. He quickly rubbed his head, I might need to use less chakra. Naruto took a few steps back and repeated the earlier process. Then he looked at the tree and once again ran towards it. Blind. The black-haired teen sat in the branches of a high tree. His hair was wild and spiky and wore a high-colored black shirt. His eyes were closed and he was sleeping silently in the tree. His eyes suddenly cracked open, revealing his black onyx eyes. The teen yawned and took a good look around. He looked up to the sky, it'll be sunset soon. The teen frowned, did I really waste the whole day sleeping? Oh well, I needed it. Shisui looked around once more and he suddenly raised an eyebrow. He looked down at the red-haired boy, he's still at it. That boy has been here since a little past noon. Shisui looked at the tree he was staring at. Shisui shook his head. By looking at the marks, he hadn't managed to get past 7 feet. Shisui watched as Naruto formed a hand seal and began gathering chakra to his feet. Though you'll give him credit, he has determination. Shisui then watched as he raced up the tree and then Shisui's eyes widened. He watched as he flew past the 7 feet mark and smoothly ran up halfway the tree. Where several markings went unnoticed by Shisui where Naruto ran a few more steps before he marked his spot and jumped off. Naruto landed on the ground smoothly, but out of nowhere he stumbled backwards and fell to his knees. Naruto suddenly let out a big grin as he attempted to catch his breath. Shisui couldn't help but grin as well. What an impressive brat, that's better than most genin do in a week. Shisui then scratched his chin, that red hair though, why does it seem so familiar? Shisui was broken from his thoughts when Naruto suddenly raced up the tree once more. Naruto ran swiftly up the tree and managed to get a few steps past his mark. Naruto grabbed his kunai and attempted to mark his spot. The kunai cut deeply into the tree but it was suddenly caught in it. Naruto's eyes widened in shock and he lost the total balance of his body. With no control of his body he plummeted to the ground. As Naruto fell to the ground Shisui's eyes widened, realizing who exactly Naruto was, beyond Aim's son. Naruto shut his eyes expecting the worst, but it never came. Naruto slowly reopened them, and was surprised to be in Shisui's arms. For a moment Naruto felt a sense of deja vu. Just like dad, Amido he saved me from hitting the floor. Hey, kiddo I'm Shisui. Quite the close shave back there, huh? Spoke Shisui. Naruto was suddenly brought back to reality, and the situation dawned upon him. Naruto remained frozen for a second, causing Shisui to panic, are you alright? Shouted Shisui, as Naruto's fist slammed into his face. Shisui let go of Naruto, and Naruto jumped away. Shisui clenched his nose and glared at Naruto. What was that for? Naruto glared at Shisui. How do I know you're not an enemy ninja? You don't have a forehead protector nor are you wearing any Kanoha attire. Shisui sweat dropped, me an enemy shinobi. Don't you see the Chiha crest on my back? Out of nowhere the kunai from earlier landed in between Naruto and Shisui. Naruto eyed the kunai, why don't you show me? Shisui sighed, fine. Shisui turned around revealing his back, see? Shisui's eyes widened as he turned around to see Naruto with the kunai in his hand. Then with a flick of his wrist it was flying at impressive speeds, with deadly accuracy. Shisui was impressed, even his throwing is quite refined. Then Shisui caught the blade with his bare hands. Let me tell you a few things, kid. Naruto's eyes widened as he watched Shisui catch his kunai with minimal effort. First, if I was actually an enemy shinobi I would have killed you by now. Shisui walked closer to Naruto. Second, you shouldn't attack your enemy with dull blades. That's why it got stuck in the tree earlier. Shisui suddenly activated his Sharingan. Finally, I'm a shinobi of the Hidden Leaf Village. Just because I don't have my stuff doesn't mean I'm not a shinobi of this village. Shisui tossed a blade to Naruto, and Naruto caught it. Naruto then rubbed the back of his head, I'm sorry Shisui. It's just I'm really tired and a bit off edge. It's just that no one ever comes out here, so I was surprised to see anyone here. Shisui nodded, I see, so what are you doing out here? 
I'm sure your father would allow you to practice in any of the training grounds. In fact, where is he? This tree climb training is usually hard to do without a teacher, and you've been doing it all day. Shisui watched, as Naruto rubbed the back of his head again, about that. Shisui sighed, and rubbed the back of his head. Wait oh I feel like I'm walking into a heap of trouble. Alright, tell me the whole story. Line. Naruto and Shisui sat at the base of Naruto's training tree. Naruto took a deep breath, and that's it. I'm out here because my parents refused to train me, so I've decided to train myself. Shisui looked over at Naruto, I don't know whether to be impressed or not. Naruto raised an eyebrow, what do you mean? Shisui rested his head across the tree, well, from one's view, it looks like you're just being a little whiny brat, that doesn't want to wait another year to start playing ninja. Naruto eyes widened in anger, and he clenched his fists, it's not that. Shisui cut him off, or I've stumbled upon some type of prodigy. All the anger in Naruto's eyes was replaced with shock. I mean it's completely unheard of for some not even academy students to nearly master this exercise in a day. Not to mention you did it by merely seeing someone else do it a few times. Praise Shisui, that's just crazy. Naruto remained silent at the praise, and Shisui suddenly smiled. Look here kid, I've been looking for a student for a while, to rival my best friend who's teaching his little brother. So, how about it? You wouldn't mind it if I taught you. Shisui closed his eyes expecting some type of loud response, but he opened his eyes at the sound of sobbing. Shisui suddenly panicked, what are you doing? Why are you crying? Naruto wiped away a tear, I'm sorry it's just I've never been praised so highly by anyone, and I would gladly be your student Shisui sensei. Shisui suddenly understood the situation, and gave Naruto a smile. I guess I understand the kid. I guess the neglect in his training has made him feel inferior to his sister. Naruto suddenly hugged Shisui, and Shisui awkwardly hugged him back, but that doesn't mean I'm going to make him feel better. Hey kid, stop hugging me. I'm not some teddy bear. Shouted Shisui. Snore. Shisui deadpanned, he fell asleep. Shisui sighed, he has been training all day. I guess it's finally caught up to him. Shisui grabbed Naruto, and tossed him over his back, I guess I have to take him home now. If I leave him here, the Yandame won't be too happy. With Naruto on his back, Shisui jumped to the trees, and raced to Naruto's house. Completely unaware of the grin that sneaked onto Naruto's face. Time skip. Naruto was laying in his bed enjoying the peaceful sleep he was having. Until he heard his mother yell. Naruto get up. Naruto slowly rising up, noticed that it was only 7am. Naruto was thinking to himself. What do they want? They usually don't wake me up unless it's my birthday. Looking at the calendar he noticed it was October 10th. He quickly dashed out of his room now full aware it was his 9th birthday. Knowing that today was his birthday, but more importantly knowing he would be able to sign up for the academy. As he raced to the kitchen he was expecting hugs and happy birthday from his parents. Instead when he arrived at the kitchen. He saw that the rest of his family were already at the kitchen table. They were all impatiently waiting for him, while a plate of eggs and bacon was out for each of THE I'm sorry, couldn't think of any Asian breakfast foods. Come on Naruto, you're gonna cost us from eating your sister's birthday breakfast, said Kashina. Mido and Naruto both blinked in surprise because they didn't hear you or any mention of him. What do you mean by your sisters? Isn't it my too? I mean it's my birthday too, declared a now slightly irritated Naruto. Kashina and Minato both almost jumped out of their chairs completely now aware that they had forgotten about Naruto. Oh my god what a terrible parent I am. I totally forgot about my other son's birthday, and it's on the same day as Mido wait. What am I thinking Mido's? OMG I'm a terrible do I say. Thought both a very nervous Kashina and Minato. Lucky Minato wasn't Hokage for nothing. Well Naruto, what she means is that breakfast was dedicated to Mido here. Well lunch will be dedicated to you. So you get to pick anything you want for lunch. Naruto looked at him, and his mother already completely figured them out. Though instead of blowing up like he usually did, thanks to Shisui's teaching of meditating he just sighed and sat down. Deciding to just play along to not completely ruin the day. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Said Naruto, as he sat down, and began to eat. Mido also decides to eat, totally buying the lie their parents had said. While both Kashina and Minato looked at each other with a ton of guilt. Both now determined to make sure to make it up to him. After breakfast. After breakfast Minato had quickly left to finish his Hokage business, so he could come home early for today's birthday party. Leaving Kashina, Naruto, and Mido alone at the table. So Naruto, what are you planning to do until your birthday party this afternoon? Asked the determined Kashina. Wanting to make it up to him. Well I was hoping to go see Shisui Sensei, replied Naruto. Why would you want to train on your birthday? I mean don't you want to go play with your friends? Asked a puzzled Kashina. The now very embarrassed Naruto replied, Well you see it's just that mumbling the rest, as he looked over at Mido. What did you say? Said Kashina, as the look at Mido didn't go unnoticed. It's that I really don't have any other friends besides Shusui. Said a now ashamed Naruto, as he thought about why this had happened. Flashback no jutsu. 
It has been the year during their 8th birthday. It had been the day Naruto decided to pull a prank on Mito, dyeing her hair red. Naruto yelled an enraged Mito as her hair was red making her look just like her mom. I'm gonna kill you. Look it's mini mom. Laughed Naruto as he ran out of his house to the safety of Grandma Tsunade. This is pointless. He is so much faster than me. Tsunade will definitely protect him from my wrath. I'll get you back one way or another Naruto. Thought Mito as she walked back to her room. Later at the birthday party. All the clan head's kids had been invited as well as a few civilian friends of Mito and Naruto. The party had been going well. Parents were inside enjoying a few drinks while the kids were outside waiting for cake and to open presents. That's when Mito decided to get a revenge. I'm pretty sure that everyone here would probably do anything I should have thought of Mito as she plotted a revenge. Hey everyone listen up. If you play with Naruto you can't be my friend. Announced Mito to all the kids. All the kids looked at each wondering if they should listen but ending up doing exactly that. They thought that they had to be either Naruto or Mito as a friend. It would be Mito because their parents said she was really important to the village. So of course almost everyone just went with it. I can't believe she just said that. Look at everyone going along with it except Shikamaru and Choji. Thought a shock Naruto. So for the rest of the day every time Naruto tried to play with someone he was kicked out. I can't believe she would do this though Naruto as he went inside and locked himself in his room telling his parents he was sick. Flashback no jutsu release. Why wouldn't he have friends? I mean he is the son of the fourth Hokage. Thought a now very intrigued Kashina. So she decided to ask. Why don't you have any friends? Once again looking at Mito as she was now paying attention to the conversation. Realizing that she may in fact get in huge trouble if Naruto told her the truth. Naruto of course being the kitty was said. I don't know. I guess they just don't like me too much. Like Naruto. It's not like I don't have friends, it's just not my age. Shisui, Kakashi and Itachi are my friends. Seeing that Kashina wasn't satisfied with the answer decided to run for it. Well I'm gonna go by mom see you later said Naruto as he sprinted off. Mito just sighed in relief and left thinking, I can't believe that Naruto didn't drag me out. Ugh why do I feel so guilty now? Clutching her heart why didn't you just drag me out Naruto? Of course this didn't go unnoticed by Kashina. What's going on here? What do you have to do with Mito? We'll all figure this out later. Thought Kashina as she went on her way to finish up her chores for the birthday party later today. With Minato. Well that's the last of it, signed Minato as he finished up his paperwork. Suddenly his family picture of him and his family caught his eye. Then he formed a smile thinking how long it has been. I can't believe that my kids are already turning 9. Looking at Mito in the picture. Mito has surely grown in her training the past year. I truly believe that you are the one that death spoke of. She definitely had inherited his looks. The blonde hair and bright blue eyes. Yet, she is just like Kashina Brash, dense, kind, loyal and the temper. Suddenly Minato formed a swift drop thinking about his daughter's aggressive temper. Then he looked at his son. If his red hair didn't make him stand out enough, his bright blue sea eyes with the hair definitely did. Ironically he was the one with the three whiskers on each cheek. He kind of had a mixed personality between him and Kashina. He was smart and collective like him, kind and loyal like his mom. He was worried because of the reaction he received knowing that Naruto saw through his white lie. That isn't what had gotten Minato so worried. It was the fact that he didn't do anything about it. Just simply let it go like it was nothing. Naruto, why do I feel like you're starting to push away from us? Is it because I didn't personally look after your training? Pondered Minato. No it can't be that I heard he was very happy with Shisei as a sensei. No it's because I haven't been a great father to him. Minato stood up from his desk and moved toward his window. As he looked out he saw his whole village busy at work. From civilians working to get jobs done to some ninja enjoying a good walk. Yes Naruto I'm gonna start spending more time with you. Starting by including you in training with your sister, Minato thought he would bring his son back a bit more. I just hope you won't get too mad about tonight. With Naruto walking down the village. I can't believe they just forgot about me, thought Naruto, as he slowly walked down the street toward the Ichiha compound. How could they forget that it was my birthday too? Do they not love me? This question was slowly eating away at Naruto. For a minute he wanted to say no. Of course not. It was just simply this one time. I bet it won't happen again. We just have to see how tonight goes. If they give me a good thought out gift, then that will prove it. Thought Naruto, as he passed a couple more shops. As he turned the corner he arrived at the Ichiha front gates with the two guards. Hey I came to see Shisei. Exclaimed Naruto. We know you come here every day. Replied one of the guards. Hey I'm not a brat. Even if you do know, I still have to check in Databeo replied an annoyed Naruto. Whatever brat. Snickered the other guard hoping to get a rise out of Naruto. Naruto replies, why well, you son of. Better not finish that unless you want to run 100 laps around Kanoha brat, says Shisei, as he walks up to the front gate. Sensei. I'm not a brat Databeo, replies Naruto. 
I know Naruto is just playing with you, right guys? Both guards nodded their heads, and laughed seeing how tormented the kid was. Come on, let's go to my house. I got something for you. Says Shisui. Alright sensei let's go. Responds Naruto knowing he would receive the gift. Naruto and Shisui made their way towards Shisui's apartment in the Chiha compound. Greeted by a few people when they finally arrived, Shisui opened the door, and let Naruto in. Wait here Naruto, I'll be right back said Shisui, as he walked to his bedroom. Returning back. Here you go, Naruto, this is my present to you. Announced Shisui. Though before you open it I have to tell you something so listen up. Yes sir. Replied the excited Naruto. Shisui begins talking, Naruto, this is my present to you. What you're about to open is something that costs me lots of money. So take good care of it, okay? Seeing Naruto understood he continued. The reason I'm giving you this is because I'm proud I made you my student. Even though you haven't done anything in the ninja world, you have proven to me that you are worthy of being a ninja. You have the traits of becoming a great ninja, and I'm sure you will be too. Though now I will no longer be able to train you, as often, as I did because I have decided to join Anbu. That doesn't mean I won't train you, it just won't be, as daily, as it is now. Seeing Naruto's sad face, as Shisui decides to wrap up things. Naruto you will now be joining the academy. Even though you may know most of what is expected there I want you to stay all three years. Before you protest, yes I know that you may have a chance to graduate a year early, but it will do you good to stay with people your age. Don't want to turn out like Itachi huh? Not allowing Naruto to say anything like Itachi is the best though. Don't worry though, after you graduate my Anbu time will be done, and I'll get a chance to train you again. Now open your gift. Replied Shisui. Naruto could just simply nod. He couldn't believe that he would no longer get to train with his best friend, as much anymore. He opened the gift he received, to find a beautiful orange handle sword still in its sheath. He looked closer at the handle to see that there was an Uzumaki swirl on one side, and a Kanoha leaf on the other. When he took it out of the sheath, it had a beautiful black blade with an orange line cutting through it. Thanks Shisui don't you worry, when I come out of the academy I will definitely look forward to learning from you again. I will make this sword the most famous sword in the world. Exclaimed a now excited Naruto. We'll see about that brat. You better run along, and get ready for tonight I heard your parents were throwing a big yeah, and keep working on the wind chakra exercises. Noted Shisui. Alright thanks for everything sensei. Answers Naruto, as he runs up to him, and gives him a big hug right before he leaves. Party time. The backyard was filled with a bunch of children. There was lots of music and games. Though there was one kid who stuck out, and that was Naruto. He was simply just sitting on the side with Shikamaru and Choji. So Shika, Choji you ready to join the academy next week or what asked Naruto. What a drag I really don't want to go but it's better than being stuck with mom replied the lazy Nar. Well, I'm very excited about Naruto. I really want to become a strong ninja. Exclaimed Choji, as he ate away at his chips. Suddenly Kakashi popped out of nowhere. Yo? Kakashi said coolly. Kakashi. What's up? Did you come to the birthday party? Answered Naruto. Sorry Naruto, I have a mission, and came over to give you this, said Kakashi, as he handed Naruto a wrapped gift. Give me. Give me. Remarked Naruto, as he ripped open the present to find a mask, and an orange book. What? Why did you give me this book you pervert? He turns around to see Kakashi had already left. He looked at the book, and the mask.it wouldn't hurt to read it would it? Now let's just see what it's about. Completely forgetting about Shikamaru and Choji he opened the book, and began to read it. Blushing just after reading one random page. Now I know why Kakashi wears the mask thought of Naruto, as he looked at the mask. Suddenly Kashina had called in all the kids to eat cake, and open presents. Of course Naruto, and Mito got to sit at the front of the table, while the rest of the parents, and kids sat in front of them. After everyone devoured the delicious cake, presents were handed out. Mito, and Naruto mostly received clothes, and money from most of the civilian families. From the clan families they received some ninja tools. Kashina had decided to start to teach both Naruto, and Mito about sealing, so gave them a book over it too. Tsuneida decided to give both Naruto, and Mito a book about medical ninja. Mikoto Ichi had decided to give Mito an Ichiha shirt, much to Sasuke's annoyance. While Itachi handed Naruto a wind scroll he had collected on one of his King Minato's gifts. Alright everyone listen up. Today I have decided to give both Mito and Naruto special gifts. As well make a big announcement. Announced Minato to the crowd. As he whips out a summoning scroll which he gives to both Mito and Naruto. I would like to give you guys the summoning scroll to the Toad contract. Naruto quickly runs up and starts writing his name in the scroll. I knew it. My parents will never forget about me. How this shows they love me too. As well, Toad's beak crows. Ha take that shisi. So dad, what are the hand signs for the summoning exclaimed Naruto hoping to show off in front of the crowd. You see Naruto I won't teach you how to summon quite yet, maybe after the academy dot I'm just giving you the summoning scroll for now, replied Minato. Mon Naruto, really wanting to know how to summon. 
Alright now for my second announcement exclaimed Minato. This suddenly got everyone's attention. Wondering what this second announcement could be about. Many of you know the Namikas is actually a cousin clan to the Ichiha. Minato looked down, seeing some of the Ichiha smirking. Knowing well that the Yellow Flash was actually a cousin of the Ichiha. Well today I have decided to announce Mito as the official heir of the clan. Many looked at him in shock. Not because of the announcement, but because in reality the heir of the clan was always the oldest. In this family it was Naruto Namikas. Kashina looked shocked, not believing Minato would actually do something like this without her approval. Mito didn't know what to think. Everyone else was a bit taken back, but many of the clan heads understood. If the eldest didn't show promise then the next kid would take over. Thought that really wasn't the case here. Naruto was even more shocked not believing his own birthright was stolen from him. Of course Naruto wasn't gonna let this slide. What do you mean Mito is the heirs? Fired Naruto. That's my birthright. Not hers. Naruto Kames just shows lots of promise, as a ninja. Explained Minato, didn't think he would get this mad. I mean he has always been so quiet and calm about things. And I don't. Asked Shisui. He says I show lots of promise too. Yelled Naruto. I'm not saying you don't show promise, it's just that Minato couldn't finish, as Naruto ran out crying covering his eyes. I can't believe he did that. And this pain in my eyes. Minato I don't believe that was wise of you. I mean I understand you wanted to give Mito the title, but shouldn't you have told Naruto beforehand? Suggested Shikakunar. As well, isn't it a bit early to be naming heirs? Many of the people in the crowd started agreeing with Shikaku. And why didn't you tell me beforehand? Asked now irritated Kashina. Well you see I wanted it to be a surprise. Stuttered Minato. I jumped the gun didn't I? Of course you did. I can't believe you did that to your own son oh great fourth. Jumped in Tsunade, very angry at what she just saw. Well, maybe I should go talk to him. Asked Minato, starting to feel the guilt that I didn't mean to hurt Naruto's feelings. I just wanted to motivate Mito more by naming her clan I shouldn't have done this. Don't. Let him cool off. Shusui already went after Itachi, as he walked away feeling a bit irritated with the Hokage. Naruto, and Shusui. I can't believe they did that to me. And in front of everyone. Thought Naruto, as he ran to the lake in the park. I thought they loved me. As Naruto stood there weeping he couldn't shrug off the pain in his eyes. And this pain. My eyes feel like they are on fire. Suddenly Shusui appeared in his signature body flicker technique. Hey Naruto are you? As Shusui looked at Naruto's eyes he was beyond shocked the Shuringen. As he stared into his eyes now bloodshot red with one Tomo in the left eye, and two Tomo in the right. Naruto stopped weeping seeing that Shusui was obviously in shock. What's wrong with Shusui? Naruto looked into the reflection of the lake. Commanded Shusui. Naruto doing just that, took the same face that Shusui had just moments ago. Well, this just got very interesting. Thought Shusui. One year, and six months later. Two figures were racing in the tree lines just outside of Kanoha. Both of them had spiky hair. Yet the taller ones were black at night, while the younger ones were red, as blood. The taller one was wearing a traditional Anbu outfit with an Achiha symbol on the back. The short one was wearing a black and orange Uzumaki outfit, Shippuden outfit. Yet what made them pop out the most was those red eyes of theirs. Yes these two were no other than Naruto and Shisui. It has been a year and six months since Naruto's ninth birthday. Many things had happened that day. Whether it was for the good or bad only time will tell. Though what it did was activate Naruto's Shuringen. Now he had been able to activate the second Tomo in his left eye. Shisui had thought best to keep this a secret from everyone else. Since he knew of people who were after the power of the Shuringen and would do anything to get IT cough cough. He decided to continue to train Naruto just like he had been doing, except now he could teach him his Shuringen tricks. As well he told Naruto that if he ever wanted he could tell his parents. Though Naruto decided to keep it to himself. So, now we're here with Naruto and Shisui racing through the treetops. Suddenly Shisui pulls out several kunai and throws them at Naruto. Naruto quickly dodged or blocked those thrown at him. Not allowing him time to think, Shisui engages him into jutsu. Shisui easily forces Naruto into defense. Crap, I can't beat Shisui into jutsu. I need to get some distance. Thought Naruto, as he tried to get as much distance as possible. Though Shisui won't let him have it, knowing exactly what he was trying to do. Though Naruto had tricks up his own sleeve. Pulling out a smoke bomb he exploded it, blinding both him and Shisui. Shisui, believing Naruto would try to get some distance this way, jumped out of the smoke. Though that's exactly what Naruto was hoping for, he didn't jump out of where Shisui jumped, he used a wide spread to force him right where he wanted him. Covered by the smoke he started to wield some hand signs. Wind release. Vacuum sphere. As Shisui jumped out of the smoke he looked around for Naruto dot where he went. Though at the corner of his eye he was able to catch the small blasts of wind chakra shot at him. Not bad Naruto. Use the smoke screen to force me out, while you stay in, and indeed. Though not clever enough. Thought Shisui, as he easily dodged the attack, and landed on a branch. 
Though, as soon as he landed a wire was set off. The trap tied Shusui to the tree. Naruto seeing his plan had worked he jumped out of the smoke and near the tree where Shusui was. I win sensei. Exclaimed Naruto, finally able to trap Shusui. So, you made this trap while we were engaged in Tujutsu, correct? Seeing Naruto Nadi continued. As well the smoke was to force me out into the using wide range attack to force right onto this branch. Naruto just grinned, though suddenly so did Shusui. Tio bad I saw right through it. Then suddenly Naruto suddenly saw black, and what looked like two pairs of Shuringen eyes. As soon as it disappeared he realized he was the one tied to the tree. What? But how? In Jutsu, this allows you to manipulate the enemy into doing what they want to do to you. As well you can turn someone else's against them. Though usually it takes some hand signs, and the opponent to look into the user's Shuringen. Though I've mastered it to the point where I don't need hand signs. It's called the Shuringen Mirage in Jutsu. Grin Shusi. The moment before you set the smoke, I caught you under it. Making you jump out of the smoke, then I simply threw some shuriken, and made you dodge the plan would have worked if it was anyone else. Naruto just stared in awe. He couldn't believe how powerful that was enough that his shuringen didn't detect he only had two tomo. Will I be learning that asked Naruto. Yeah of course the reason I showed you it was because I would be teaching it to you tomorrow. Exclaimed Shusi, as he untied Naruto. Dang a sensei, I thought I had you this time. Cried out Naruto. Naruto takes it easy. I'm an anbu, it takes years before you catch up. Responded Shusi, though seeing he wasn't completely satisfied. As well that was some high gen and level strategy right there. I mean I don't think even some Chunin could think that off. Praised Shusi. Naruto just looked up and smiled, you right Shusi. How about some ramen? I'm sorry I can't get Naruto back. Here's some money, go get yourself some. See you tomorrow, though come early, since you're gonna learn that yeah, and stop skipping classes. Explained Shusi, as he disappeared in his usual body flicker technique. Whatever Ichiraku ramen here I come exclaimed Naruto, as he left in his own body flicker technique, which consisted of a swirl of leaves. Ichiraku ramen stand. Naruto appeared right outside of the stand. Quickly going in he sat down in his usual seat with two people in the back. An aged man, and his young daughter no older than 15. Old man got me two bowls of miso ramen. Exclaimed Naruto. You got it Naruto, Aim got me two bowls for our favorite customer. Shouted out Tuchi. Got it dad. Responded Aim. Suddenly two blonde haired girls walked in the stand. Naruto, not even bothering to look around, didn't know that it was her sister Mido, and her best friend Ino. You know Naruto, you really shouldn't be eating so much ramen. It's quite unhealthy. Dot pointed out Mido. Well Ino says, yeah, I should be more like Sasuke, I'm sure he doesn't eat so much ramen. Naruto just sighed, and had been trying to be nicer to his sister, since Shisui had asked him to. Flashback no jutsu. It had been a few days after his birthday. Just two days ago Shisui had picked up his training after the academy at full speed. After the academy Naruto would come here for two hours. The first hour would be spent on perfecting the basics, such as chakra control elemental control, and wielding his weapons. Such as the blade he hadn't been able to name. Then the next hour they would work on Tajutsu Ninjutsu and the Shuringen. Though it was more with the Shuringen than anything else. Though today was the day Shisui decided to give Naruto a talk. He's been getting a lot colder since what happened on his birthday. I need to snap him out of it, before he does something stupid. Thought Shisui. Hey Naruto, we need to talk. Stated Shisui. What is it sensei? Asked Naruto. Cut it out, or I'll stop teaching you. This isn't the student I wanted to teach a few weeks ago. Said Shisui crossing his arms. Cut out what? Asked Naruto, now a bit more concerned. Stop being such a brooder. Drop it Naruto, forget what happened. If you continue the way you are, you're just gonna regret everything, and forget. Said Shisui. But Shisui you just don't understand. You have no idea how it feels to always be overlooked. Simply ignored by your sister, even though you try so hard to get their attention. You have no idea. I mean I don't care about being the heir, it's just because they ignored me again. Yelled back Naruto. Shisui just pinched his nose, yes Naruto in fact I do. Naruto just stared at him confusedly. What do you mean? You know Itachi right? Well, Itachi has always been considered a genius like no other, even in the Chiha clan. Well as young children my parents had always asked why I couldn't be more like him. It infuriated me to no end. Exclaimed Shisui, as he shut his eyes. Then opening them so, that day instead of resenting my parents, and Itachi I set a goal to be better than him. To show everyone I was Shisui Ichiha. Not the cousin of Itachi. To this day I have worked my butt, and I have even surpassed him. With that Shisui closed his eyes, and reopened them. To show Naruto what looked like a four-pointed shuriken. What is that Shisui asked Naruto. He had never seen this from his sensei before. This Naruto is the highest level of the Shuringen the Manjakyo Shuringen. With these eyes I can achieve visual prowess behind the normal Shuringen. Though I won't show you because it's kind of a double-edged sword. I have special only these types of eyes. And known as. 
With this I can implant false memories into one's brain, and manipulate them however I want. Another one would be. The most powerful known to man. With this I can trap one into an unbreakable in which I control everything for 48 hours. When in reality it would only be 3 seconds. This is something not achieved since Madar and Izune Chiha. Though there is more than just that explained Shisei. Naruto just stood in awe. And that controls another person, space, and time itself. Still has more abilities. But how do you achieve these abilities asked Naruto. Shisui just sighed there are two ways in which one may unlock the Manjekyo Shiringen. The first and most common way would be to kill the closest person to you. The wind blew loud as an eerie silence took over both of them. Of course there is a second way. The way I took. That is to train you to the point where it naturally evolves to the Manjekyo Shiringen. Though, as I mentioned it is a double-edged sword. The more I use it the closer I come to losing my sight. Until I'm completely become blind. Wow Shisui I'm sorry I didn't know. As well how come I've never heard of the Manjekyo Shiringen if it's so powerful asked Naruto. Well you see Naruto there's a reason it isn't known. The reason is because the Manjekyo Shiringen is very difficult to achieve. Only maybe 5 people before me have actually activated it. I'm probably the only one who has achieved it through hard work alone. Everyone else has activated it by killing the closest person they have replied Shisui. That's why it's a clan secret. If everyone knew there would be clansmen killing left and right. I see, but why are you telling me this dot asked Naruto. It's because I want you to completely forgive your parents. I understand how it feels to be overlooked. Though don't allow yourself to turn into a shallow person. You still have Tsunade, Kakashi, Itachi, me, and many other people. Right. You should even include your parents because one day you will show them who Naruto is. In fact once you graduate you really don't have to be an amicus. You can change your surname to Uzumaki. The clan of friendship. That's why I put a symbol on your sword. Said Shisu pointing to his orange handled sword. Naruto's eyes just widened. You're right Shisei. I'm not just the Hokage's son, or Mido's brother. I'm Naruto na no Uzumaki. And I'll be the second person ever to unlock the Manjakyo Shuringen with sheer effort alone. Then I'll show everyone. But, then stop being so cold to your family. I don't expect you to be friends with your parents, but actually respond to them nicely. As for your sister, try to be friends with her. I mean it really isn't her fault. She probably didn't even know about the whole heiress thing. Finished Shisei. Yes sir. Said Naruto. Shisei's right. I should at least show some manners. I guess he has a point about me though. Shisui just gave Naruto a smile. Naruto I believe that you can achieve greatness beyond those of Madar. Yet instead be more like Hiroshima. The reason is because if my research is correct, once you unlock the Manjakyo Shiringen you won't suffer the curse. You would need a transplant to achieve eternal light because Naruto you hold both Senju and Ichiha blood. It will be needed for the times ahead. Suddenly Shisui's smile faded. He watched Naruto begin his warm-ups. Especially if the clan goes ahead with the coup d'etat. As well that orange mask guy Itachi encountered looking around, he seems like a man that will become very dangerous. I just hope you're strong enough to endure it if I'm not around. Sadly Shisui thought. Flashback no jutsu release. Even though he has had some success with his sister, he really didn't like some of her friends. Especially Ino, even though she has shown some traits he likes like loyalty to a friend. She was so bossy and obsessed with Sasuke. He thought Sasuke was okay, just not a god. Whatever, I can still beat him in a spar. Said Naruto hoping to get a rise out of Ino. Mido just sighed even though she was grateful Naruto was talking to her more, she still couldn't stand his prankster ways. Whatever Naruto you're such a loser. Screamed Ino. Did you say something Ino? Coolly replied Naruto Kakashi would be proud. Ino just fell on her face, and Mido just sweat dropped. So, Mido wants some ramen. Shisui gave me some extra money today. Asked Naruto. No, I just passed by to tell you not to eat so much. Let's go Ino, we should meet up with Hinata. Answered quickly, and recovered, and gave Naruto a glare. With that the two blonde haired friends left. Naruto just sighed even though he really hated Ino, he wished he had a friend like that. Friends that were always by your side. Even though Shisui was his best friend, he was always on missions. As well he was like 5 years older. Naruto just finished his food, and went home. He really felt lonely. Next day. Naruto was walking home. He had just finished the academy for the day. Even though Shisui told him to be there early, he was in no rush to get home. Today he decided to pull a prank on his unfavored teacher Mizuki. Naruto didn't know why he just didn't get good vibes from him. He was always staring at his sister, like she was a prize. Even though he didn't entirely love Mido, that doesn't mean he was gonna let some guy stare at her. Yes, he had sent him packing to hospital. His prank had consisted of paint balloons, and Ninja had tripped him up, and sent him head first into the wall. Knocked out consciously, the class was dismissed early except for Naruto. Who had been punished by scrubbing off the paint in the room. If his mom found out he was getting yelled at again. He continued to walk. He was on the edge of a trail right through the middle of the small area of trees. 
As he walked his way through, he heard some commotion. Deciding to check things out he headed to see what it was. As he checked it out, he noticed it was three bullies surrounding a kneeling girl with lavender hair. As he took a closer look he noticed it was one of Mido's friends Hita. Tinta. Hinata. That's it. Having had enough of this, he decided to intervene. As soon as the bullies tried to throw a punch he quickly got in front of it and caught it. Don't you think it's a little rude to pick on a lady? Asked Naruto. What's it to you? Asked one of the bullies. Who are you anyways? Hey guys, it's Mido's brother. My mother said he was the loser son of the stated one. What are you gonna tell your dad, the Hokage? Taunted one of the bullies. A tick mark appeared on his forehead. He couldn't believe people were saying he was loser I beat you all to the ground I'll show you the only losers here are you cowards. Whatever, just don't go tell your daddy. Taunted one. Yeah, but it's three on one anyway. Whatever, fine by me. By the way, the names are not Brad or Hokage's son, it's Naruto Naruto Uzumaki. Declared Naruto. With that Naruto engaged the bullies. It was totally one-sided, as Naruto was able to knock them out, and tie them to some tree. As he finished that up he walked up to the girl. So, your name's Hinata. Right. Asked Naruto. Um yes you're Naruto right. But I thought your last name was Namikis. Asked Hinata. Well, yeah, but once I graduate I'm gonna change it to Uzumaki. Cause the Uzumaki clan was known for its friendship with the leaf. Claimed Naruto. Why wouldn't you want to be Namikis? Asked Hinata, clearly confused. Well you see Hinata. I just hate being known as the Hokage's kid or just Mido's, I am going to make a name for myself. I'm gonna show everyone that I'm Naruto Uzumaki. As well I really just don't want the last name to give away my spot, as air cause I wasn't worthy enough to beat. So I'm gonna show everyone that I won't let this stop me from being the best at Abeo. Replied Naruto. Well, take care Hinata. See you tomorrow at the academy. With that Naruto just jumped to the trees, and body flickered home. Hinata just stood there still a bit shocked. He is just like me. A person believed to be unfit to be an heir. Yet he is still strong, willing to go against the tides. Naruto you're nothing like your sister described you. Standing up Hinata made her way home. Naruto you've inspired me to do my best to Naruto Uzumaki, that has a nice tone to it, Hinata Uzumaki with that final, though she gave a really big blush. Though she quickly dismissed it because she didn't want to be an obsessed fangirl. No, she wanted to prove her worth just like Naruto. Namika's household. Kashina and Mido stood in the kitchen. Mido was sitting at the kitchen table, while her mother was cooking some lunch. That's when Naruto appeared in a whirl of leaves. Naruto, you're home. I wish I could really stop using that leaf shunshin. Sweetly smiled Kashina. For anyone that knew Kashina that wasn't the smile you wanted to receive. Yes, mother. Replied Naruto why do I have the scariest mom. Red death, more like the death god itself. Hello Naruto. Said Mido. She was just sitting there reading some book. Hello, Mido replied to Naruto. With that Naruto went toward his room, and picking up his gear, he walked back to the kitchen. As he was about to reach the door. Naruto, aren't you gonna eat with us? asked Kashina. He was still a little cold towards us. In fact he hardly ever eats with us. At least he gets along with Mido. No, I'm not going to eat. I'm heading to train with Shisei. He said he was gonna teach me something new, and I should get there early. Responded Naruto. Naruto you don't always have to be training. You should sit down, and eat with us. I know Shisui can only train you for certain hours, but your father, and I could train you when he isn't around. Said Kashina. Please come around Naruto. You have no idea how much this is hurting me. No, there are things only Shisui can teach me, what you can't. As well I really wouldn't want any training from dad. Maybe you, but not dad. Replied Naruto. Kashina felt a bit relieved, but irritated at the same time. At least he has opened up to me a bit. Though I really wish she could forgive him, does he mean only Shisui can't teach him? I was joning for a long time. That brat just started. What's so special about Shisui? I understand he's talented but what is it that only he can only teach you? I mean both your father and I are much more experienced than could he possibly teach you that we couldn't? Questioned Kashina. Naruto just sighed. I if I continue this talk, I'm gonna end up having to train with, as well as get her off my back. He walked towards the door, and opened it. Though before he stepped through he replied. Shisui is my friend. That's what makes the training worth it. Training with my best friend. As well as the reason he can teach me, and you can't, Naruto turned around with his eyes wide open. Revealing his Shuringen, two Tomo in each eye. With that done Naruto walked out the house. Kashina just stood there in shock. Trying to process everything that just happened. Sure Shuringen. How? When? Why didn't he tell us I didn't think an Amicus could actually awaken it? Mido, honey I'll be right back I'm going to go talk with your father, shouted Kashina. Mido hadn't been paying attention to what occurred, but if she had she probably wouldn't have been able to reply, okay mom. Many hours later in Hokage's office. Minato just sat in his office. Finally catching up on today's tensions got high, so did this pile of paperwork. He was really sick of it. 
he couldn't imagine how the third could have done it for so long. What made it so much worse was the fact that his wife came storming and demanding to talk with him. At first she accused him of not telling her about his son unlocking the Sharingan. At first he thought she was just joking because no one had been able to unlock it in the Namakis clan since the beginning of Kanoha. After a bit of talking, I calmed her down. They both realized that they both were never aware of how or when he unlocked it. So Minato just sent her home and told her he would find out. He of course knew only one person who could answer all his questions, Shisui Chiha. He would have to know that's what Naruto had told, now he sat and waited. He wanted to call him immediately, but he didn't want to make things worse with his son. Now that we're talking about his son, things between Naruto and Minato weren't the best. The week following his birthday he had completely stopped talking to Minato. Though after that week he started to open up, but only when he was called upon. As well he had completely denied all attempts of training with Minato. It really sat in Minato. He knew he deserved what he was getting, yet he just wanted his son to forgive him. He wondered if this is how the third felt with his son Asuma years ago. Suddenly an Anbu with a crow mask appeared. Hokage, you called me. Yes, crow though I need you to take off your mask. Asked Minato. As the crow took off his mask it was revealed to be Shisei Hokage. Have you called me here because of the crew dead it? I think it would be wise to get Itachi here too. He probably has more intel. Yes, Itachi will be coming. Though I called you sooner because I need to talk about Naruto. Replied the fourth. Shisui just looked at him curiously. What about him do you want to talk about? Why wasn't I aware that he had unlocked the Sharingan? Demanded Minato. Shisui just looked at him and took a long sigh so Naruto finally told him. Well, I told Naruto to keep it a secret since he didn't have the protection of the clan. Not having the protection would tempt others to possibly steal a dot replied Shisui. Why keep it a secret from us too? I mean we're his parents. Shouted Minato. Shisui just waited for him to calm down and responded, I told him he could tell only his parents if he wished to. He decided not to. Why didn't he tell you? I don't know. You just have to ask him. Minato just sat back down sorry Shisui. I just let my emotions get the best of how tense things have been lately. It's alright, replied Shisui. So now if I can ask a face suddenly Minato was cut off by his secretary who walked in the room. Sir the elders and the member you requested are waiting in the meeting room. Minato just nodded, I guess we have to finish this some other esco. The current situation is much more important than this at the moment. Though I expect you to answer my questions afterwards. Alright, let's go. Said Shisei. With that Shisei, and the fourth Hokage made their way to the meeting room. Meeting room. The four elders, Hirazan, Danzo Homer, Kahara, the fourth sat at a desk. In front of them stood two kneeling Shisei, and Itachi. Itachi, and Shisei had just finished giving them the whole scoop of the crew deaded. So, that's the last of it. They plan to commence the attack tomorrow asked the former Hokage, just pinching his nose. The Fichiha are planning this coup deaded. I believe the only way to resolve this is to label them as traitors. Offered Humar. Yes, it's too late not to judge them. We must act now before it's too late. Pitched in Kahar. If we join up with Anbu Black Ops, it shouldn't be too hard. Though we would also have to take out all the children. Concluded Anzo. Though he really wanted to get rid of the Ichiha for his own reasons. Enough. We shouldn't be talking about the Ichiha like this in front of Shisei and Itachi. Demanded the third. Shisei and Itachi just kneeled there showing no emotion. Though they both had a billion thoughts going through their heads. Suddenly the talking ceased and the elders just looked at Minato. Looking for an answer. So what will it be Minato? Asked Anzo. Minato just sighed. He couldn't believe that his cousin clan was thinking about revolting. If I don't take care of this problem, it could very well start the fourth great ninja war. Shisei, you said you had a that could temporarily control one right asked Minato. Shisei just nodded his head. Alright, I want you to use this to buy me some time. Just one day would be enough. I'm gonna try to reach a compromise with Ichiha first. Start your mission dismiss both well with this meeting. Finished Minato as he got up and walked out. As well both Shisei and Itachi left. Meanwhile Danzo had secretly signaled his route to commence their own operations. Then made his way to find Itachi. As he left the room a little smirk left his face. If everything goes right, I wouldn't just have a manjak your Shuringen, but also all the Shuringen left in the wreckage. Many hours later, Naruto was peacefully sleeping in his room. When suddenly the peace of the night was disturbed by the packing of a window. As Naruto slowly woke up. What could be making this noise though looking up to his window, he noticed a black crow with a scroll in its beak. Shisui sensei summoning crow. What's it doing here? Opening the window he allowed the crow to fly into his room. The crow took a lap around his room and landed onto his shoulder. Naruto reached for the scroll and opening it up. Dear Naruto, meet me at the cliff right outside training ground 31. Come alone with your ninja gear and make sure you're not followed. As well, bring the crow with you. You'll need it. Shisei. Wonder what's this for Naruto pondered for an answer and couldn't come up with anything. 
Putting on his gear, he grabbed a pillow and placed a transformation in it, quickly jumping out the window. At the cliff. Naruto quietly arrived at the cliff. It had taken him a while, since he had run into an angle while running around, he had finally gotten around. As he arrived at the scene he saw there was no one here. Looking around he noticed that he actually was alone. Closing his eyes he allowed his thoughts to take over, wondering what's up with Shisui. He was a bit jittery today. As well he is never late. Suddenly he heard a branch twitch. Quickly opening his eyes, and activating his Shuringen he turned around to see a barrage of kunai. Quickly using his eyes to his advantage he grabbed the lead kunai, and proceeded to dodge, and block the rest. Suddenly the man attacking him appeared, and tried to go for a killing blow. Naruto quickly dodged and knocked him backwards. Now that Naruto had a better look, the man was bloody, and had a plain Anbu mask on. Quickly deciding to end this, Naruto reached for his own kunai, and chucked it at him. Unsheathing his sword, he was able to add wind, and engaged him in kinjutsu. After a while of fighting Naruto cast on his sword. He made the sword look faster than it actually was. Naruto quickly got the advantage. Then stabbing him through a vital spot in the stomach. As he looked into the eyes of the mask, he noted one of his eyes was missing. As well the single black eye looked quite familiar. Pulling out the sword the person coughed, and stumbled back into a tree. He was just sitting at the tree, as blood poured out of his didn't think it was possible but he looked worse than feeling a bit sick. He still proceeded to question the man. Who are you? Why did you attack me? How did you know I would be here asked Naruto he hopes Shisui isn't taken down by him. By the looks of it, this man looks like he has already been through one battle. The man just continued to cough, and sat there. Naruto having enough he reached for his mask if you won't talk I'll just unmask you here, and now. As Naruto took off his mask, it was revealed to be a man missing his left eye. As Naruto took a closer look he stumbled back, eyes filled with shock. His hand was shaking dot there's an no way. Shisui beyond why. Shisui just looked at Naruto impassively. I had to cough test you to make sure you could go through with killing, I probably won't be around. As you can see my left eye is gone. Naruto just stood there in shock dot I'm sorry I didn't know it was you. Shisui we can get you to Tsunade to save you. She can save you she's the best. Don't worry, just rest. No, it's too late. You need to know the truth. Wheeze Shisui. Naruto began to let tears fall out. He couldn't believe he had just stabbed his best friend. You need to know what happened to me. Naruto just stood their face completely in shock, and tears pouring he still managed to nod. Shisui seeing this started his story. Naruto you have to know that the Koth the Chiha clan was planning a coup d'etat. But why? The Chiha clan had always been respected in the village. Asked Naruto. Things aren't always as they seem. They were liking the way they were being many blamed them for the attack on the Nine Tails ten and half years ago. They were blamed since an orange master Chiha claiming to be Madara was behind it, replied Shisui. But my father said it was a natural disaster. That childbirth had weakened the mother's seal, and had allowed half of the Nine Tails' power to escape. Stated Naruto. That wasn't the cough truth. That was what was told to the civilians. To the ninja, everyone was told that an orange master Chiha claiming to be Madara was behind it. Replied Shisui. Now stop asking questions and allow me to finish. I don't have much time. Naruto just nodded, and let him continue, so anyways me, and Itachi acted as double agents for the leaf. We were ordered by the Ichiha clan to join Anbu, and spy for them. Though in reality we were spying for the leaf cough. Anyways, the coup d'etat was planned to go tomorrow. So the fourth asked me to use the Manjakyo to buy him more time to come to a compromise. Naruto's eyes widened at the mention of his father. Did father do this? Shisui seeing his reaction. No Naruto, it wasn't your father who did this to me. It was a man known as Danzo Shimar. I was ordered to buy more time for the fourth. On my way to the Ichiha clan, Danzo, one of the elders, attacked me. He believed that I couldn't be trusted, and tried to steal my eyes. As you see he stole my left eye, though I got away in time. Afterwards, I was able to get away, and meet up with Itachi. Since I couldn't use them anymore without raising suspicion. I found out Itachi was ordered to massacre the clan because he allowed the children below the age of 11 to live. Since they weren't officially part of the clan. They still weren't ninjas. Still the number is no more than 20 of the 120. Koth this was only guaranteed if Itachi took complete blame, and left to become a rogue ninja. Then he would join any mercenary groups that may pose a threat. Naruto's eyes widened and shocked out massacre the Chiha clan. Father would never allow it even if he is ignorant, he would never kill his own blood. What? Father would never allow this. Naruto you don't understand. If the coup d'etat would have happened, then it would have started a civil war. If a civil war occurred many nations would try to invade Konoha. Thus starting the fourth great ninja causing meaningless death once again. Thankfully Itachi was allowed to let all the children under the age of 11 live. Finished Shisei, as his right eye slowly closed more. What about you? I mean you helped the leaf. Screamed Naruto. Naruto the moment Danzo stole my eye I was as good as dead. If I return he would kill me to hide the truth. 
As well I have no proof it was my word against his. He is the man I warned you about. The man that would try to steal your eyes because you weren't part of the clan. Explained Shisi. Naruto's breathing got heavier and heavier. He just couldn't handle all this information at once. But why do you have me stab you? Why? Asked Naruto, clutching his eyes. It was cough I would rather die at your hands than my own. Shisi coughed, proceeding to move his hand towards his right eye. He yanked out his last eye. Then grabbing the bird, he began to transplant his last eye into the bird. As well, I only trust you with my last eye. With that Shisui formed a hand sign, and pressed it on Naruto's left arm. This is a summoning you have to do is swipe some blood on it, and use the summoning technique with your left hand. Since you already have one with your right. The crows have agreed to this, so don't worry. This is where I'll place the crow with my right eye. I guess this is it Naruto. Slowly standing up Shisui proceeded to get to his hole in his stomach. Take care of the next generation of the Ichiha. Naruto. As well you can never let anyone know the truth. Do it for the village's sake, and the name of the Ichiha. The reason me and Itachi did this is so the Ichiha clan name wouldn't be tainted. I, we wanted the next generation to believe that the Ichiha clan was a proud clan. Please look after them, since many will be left all alone. Proceeding to walk away he stopped. You're actually fortunate that I told you the truth. I'm pretty sure Itachi lied to his brother, making him direct all his hate towards him. Kotho I believe that you're stronger than that. That's why I told you the truth. Don't hate your dad, or there was a choice that had to be made. Just don't trust Danzo. Shisui turns around. Naruto I believe that you are a person that will change this world for the better. You have the blood of both the Ichiha and Senju. Cough. You are destined for greatness. If you ever unlock the Manjaku Shuringen, head towards the Nakura Shrine hidden in the Ichiha compound. Pulling out a scroll, he opened it, and unsealed it showing an even bigger one back he handed it to Naruto. Here are many of mine. As well as to open the shrine. Become strong Naruto. The future will only get worse from now on. Remember the orange masked man. He is still at large, and is plotting something bad. Suddenly Shisui begun to cough really hard, and blood begun to drip out of his mouth. I've run out of time cough. I guess this is the end of the road for me, Naruto. In all honesty Naruto you were like a little brother to me. Remember I will always love you like one too. With those final words Shisui left with his body flicker technique. Naruto stopped shaking, clutching the scroll in his hands. Putting it away into his pouch, he looked at the spot where Shisui's eyes were bulging out of his sockets. Little veins all heading towards the center of his eyes. Unaware to Naruto the third Tomo appeared in his eyes. Suddenly a memory appeared in the back of his brain. Flashback no jutsu. Hey Shisui, teach me a new element please asked Naruto. Naruto, you first should completely master wind before you tackle anything else. It's only natural since you're only in the academy replied Shisui. Before Naruto could retort, and no Naruto you may not graduate early. I already told you to try to make more friends besides Shikamaru and Choji. It'll do you good. Naruto just pouted, you don't think I try. Everyone just cares about Mido. Some just become my friend to get to her. Shisui just sighed, and had Naruto sit down with him. Let me tell you a story about Naruto. Naruto just pouted more, I wanna learn a new element not hear some story. You like it. It's about how ninjutsu was started. Not many people know the truth about it. Replied Shisui. Naruto just looked curiously at Shisui how ninjutsu started. Fine, you have piqued my interest in Naruto. Shisui just smirked, alright, as you know there are nine tailed beasts in the world right? Seeing Naruto Nadi continued, well, there was once a time when all the beasts emerged, and created the ten tails. Naruto just looked at Shisui in fear ten tails. Wow, that's impossible. Who could be strong enough to split it into nine beasts? Or did the beasts simply just not want to work together? Shisui replied let me continue. This beast was so powerful that it was believed that he ruled the world. Though just like every story there is a hero. A man known as the Rikidu Senin, the sage of the six paths, was able to stop the beast with his special. Only seen in this man. The most powerful in the world. It was known as the Rinnegan. With this he defeated the beast, and became its. Then bringing peace with the land. Naruto just stared in awe. Amazing. Was it that powerful? Shisui just nodded, yes, but this isn't the end of the story. You see this man later went on to have two sons. The older son received the spiritual energy of the sage, while his younger brother received the physical strength. The older brother received A, though it wasn't the. The younger brother received the strength and chakra of his father. The older one valued nothing but power. While the younger one valued peace. He believed by working together you could achieve this. Of course, when the father sensed he would die he believed that his younger son's view on the world was similar to well he was troubled with his other son's view. Therefore he named him his heir. Of course this didn't go well with the older brother. Thus creating a huge rift between the two. Thus the older brother created the Ichiha clan, and the younger the Senju. This was the start of the rivalry between the Senju and Ichiha clan. Naruto just stared at him, wow I didn't know that's how it all started, but that's not all of it is it. Shisui smiled, sharp, as always. 
The father before he died split the ten tails into nine beasts. He entrusted the beasts to the world. Though, as you know it didn't end up well for the beasts. As he didn't just do that. Seeing the rift he created between his sons, he decided to stop the Rinnegan from emerging in either of them. He had used the last of his powers to only allow them to re-emerge in the eyes of a Senju and a Chiha child. Even though Naruto was very interested, he still helped, but asked, why are you telling me this? Shisui replies, well you see Naruto I'm telling you this because you can only be strong when you have the friends to back you up. That is the will of fire. The same will that the sage of the six paths believed in. That's why I don't want you to graduate early. Naruto just looked at Shisui still not convinced, I don't know. But that isn't the only reason. As you know the child that will reawaken it in a time of great chaos. Thus he will be the one to stop all the chaos, and finally bring peace to all the land. You want to know what Naruto is, I believe you could possibly be this child. Naruto's eyes suddenly went white. Then suddenly he let a tear out. I don't think that will happen to Shisui. I appreciate it, but that's silly, not even my parents can recognize me. How can I save the world? Shisui just chuckled. That may be true Naruto, but I believe you can overcome that. I believe you can do what the eldest of the sage couldn't. That is to forgive his family. Naruto stopped the tears thanks Shisui I don't know what to say. Though I doubt I'll awaken this. Though I'll make sure to surpass you. Shisui just looked at Naruto, and smiled you know Naruto, I'm glad I made you my student. You're like the little brother I never had. Time skip. The little brother I never had remember I will always love you like one too. These words were all that were going through his brain. Clutching his eyes, they suddenly shaped into a black eight point rounded star. With a red ring in the middle creating a black circle. Then between each gap of the star's points was a tomo. Naruto had unlocked the Manjaku Shuringen. Picture a profile, unaware of this new development, it would be years to come before he would once again use these new eyes. Though for now Naruto just fell to his knees. Deactivating his Shuringen, he collapsed onto the floor. Hokage's office. Minato was sitting at his desk impatiently. He had a really sour, and tired face. It was probably around 11pm, even though he knew staying up this late was part of the job. Right now he would rather be up doing some paperwork, than waiting for what he was waiting for. He leaned back into his chair, and sighed Fugaku I will never understand why it had to come to this. I hope you can forgive me, Itachi. All I put onto your shoulders was one big burden. I hope the next generation can be the ones to change all this. Minato straightens himself up. Deciding to attack the pile of paperwork to get things off his mind. Though, as he was about to reach for the stack his family picture caught his eye. No, what really caught his eye was Naruto. As Minato stared at the redhead's deep blue eyes. He couldn't help but feel guilty. He really wanted to make it up to him but he only had time during training. He was totally refusing that. Minato just kept thinking until his thoughts came across Shisui. I need to find out what exactly happened to him. To believe he was attacked on the way there. Yetu. Itachi looked like he wasn't gonna say more but I have an idea Hidansa was. Though with no proof I can't do anything. He's planning something big. I have to find out before it's too late. I have to keep a closer eye on him. Suddenly a black haired man with a weasel and boo mask appeared before him. It's done. I spare all the children who were yet to become genin, and weren't told about the coup deaded. A total of 13 were left alive. Sir, I have one final request. Minato just stared at Itachi with sorrow filled in his eyes. Don't worry Itachi, no harm will be done to them. As well if you need some mo. No, Lord Hokage, I don't need anything. Dot replied Itachi. I need you to never tell them the truth of this night. Minato just looked at him, and turned to his window. Why? I was planning to tell them the truth when they become much older. Itachi replied, I want them to believe that the Chiha clan was a proud clan. I don't want them to lose that part of them. That's why I did this. Minato turned around. Pulling a small bag out of his desk he tossed it at Itachi, there should be enough money in there for a month or two. As well, your request will be fulfilled, Itachi. No one will ever be told of this unless you want to. Itachi just nodded his head. With that he shunshined out of the room, and, as far away from the village, as he could. Now for the second part of my mission infiltrating Akatsuki. Hours later. Finally after settling all the chaos of the massacre. Minato just really wanted to go home, and crawl away. He did just that, teleporting home for the night. Namika's household. Kashina was impatiently waiting for her husband. She sat there at the kitchen table just reading some scrolls. Even though she was a retired shinobi she still liked to keep herself busy, and she planned to return to the forces once again after all she was only 32, but that's for another day. So now she was sitting at the kitchen table. She always waited for Minato to come home, and today would be no exception. Suddenly, there was a small flash of yellow, and Minato appeared. Minato, where were you? Demanded Kashina. I've been waiting here for ages. Minato just looked at Kashina, and his mood worsened she's gonna be devastated about Makoto. Kashina I have to tell you something. Said Minato. Kashina's eyes just flared up, you cheated on me didn't you? You son of. No? 
Kashina there's no way I would cheat on you. I love you, come on. Cut in Minato trying to calm down his wife. Kashina just looked at Minato apologetically, of course sorry I'm just a bit tired. It's just Mito says that every time she does something wrong. Built overtook Minato once again. While well, Kashina Mikoto is dead. There was a massacre at the Ichiha compound. There were only 13 survivors, all children. Kashina's eyes just went white. Falling back to her chair she let the tears flow out. Her expression was filled with great sorrow. Mi Mik Mikoto is the dead. But who would do this? Cried Kashina. We have to stop them. Minato just looked at Kashina painfully. It was Itachi, and he got away. Kashina's eyes just went white, there's no way. Itachi loved what he wouldn't ever do, must be a mistake. Minato just turned around we don't know exactly why. He caught his brother under a powerful curse that will probably leave him in the hospital for a while. He seemed to have killed all those who had the Shuringen. Leaving him, as the last one with an awakened Shuringen, besides Kakashi. Kashina just couldn't believe it. Her little Itachi had done that. She just sobbed harder into her hands. Though suddenly she stopped what about Naruto is he alright? Getting up from her chair she headed for his room. Minato follows behind Kashina. I doubt anything happened to not have to wake him up. I mean I doubt Itachi even knew about it. Shisui told me only he and Naruto did before he disappeared. Kashina just stopped walking. What do you mean disappear? Well, I sent him on a mission, and he never reported as been marked, as am I a presumed KIA sheepishly replied Minato. Kashina just stared at him Naruto is gonna be so devastated. I'm still checking, and with that Kashina hurried to Naruto's room. Minato followed close behind, they opened his door a bit, and peeked in. What they saw was Naruto silently sleeping in his bed. See he is just sleeping, whispered Minato. Though Kashina noticed something else. Naruto was too silent. She walked up, and pinched Naruto's nose. Suddenly there was a loud poof, and some smoke. Revealing to be just a pillow. Kashina's eyes went wide, and her hands were shaking. Minato he isn't here. Minato couldn't believe it. Itachi didn't possibly kill his son too no, there was no way. Kashina, don't worry we'll find him. Just stay here. Quickly flashing back to his office to alert Andu. Wait here. No way. She quickly ran to her room, put on her old ninja outfit, and headed out. Hours later. Andu had been furiously looking for the Hokage's son, yet he was nowhere to be found. Minato was beginning to panic. Did Danzo possibly take him during all the chaos? Then suddenly an Andu appeared. Sir, he's been found by Lady Kashina. He's now being treated at the hospital. Minato looked up Kashina. I told her to stay home. Doesn't matter now. Okay call of the search. I'll be heading there myself. Yes sir. Replied the Anbu, and disappeared. With that Minato proceeded to use his flying thunder god Technicoto teleport to the hospital. Arriving in the main lobby he dashed to the reception. At the reception was a young woman, probably no older than me, who said I need the information on Naruto Namikas now. The receptionist not having looked up from her files sorry, Sir Naruto is labeled as no visitors allowed by the Hokage. The tick mark on Minato's head formed I am the Hokage. Receptionist jumped out of her chair dropping all her files. Finally looking up she couldn't help, but stutter, sorry Lord Hokage. Quickly getting herself back up she pointed down the hall on her right side. Down the hall to your right. The room will be the fifth door on the left side. Room number 45. Minato just nodded, and dashed down the hall. Turning to the right down the second hallway he came to room 45. Arriving at the door, he quickly opened it, and went inside. Having walked into the room he noticed Naruto laying in bed. Kashina was sitting by his side looking very worried. Is he unconscious or resting? Thought Minato. Where did you find him? How is he? Asked Minato. Kashina turned and faced Minato. I found him right outside of training ground 31. He was just laying there totally knocked out. With his sword all bloody not too far from him seeing Minato's reaction at the last comment she continued, no, it wasn't his blood. In fact he has no injuries, I have no idea why he is unconscious though. I'm waiting for TS. Suddenly the door opened, and a pair walked in. A busty blonde woman with a green robe, and a young lady with short brown hair. What's going on? What's wrong with Naruto? Demanded the blonde. Lady Tsunade please calm down. Asked the brunette. How do you want me to calm down Shizun? We've been here all night with the Chiha massacre. Now Naruto is hurt. Minato, what type of Hokage are you? Demanded Tsunade clutching her fist. You better have a good reason or else you end up just like your pervy sensei. Minato quickly backed away, sweating bullets, while waving his hands in the air. Tsunade please circa. Minato was interrupted by Kashina, Tsunade right now isn't the moment. We need to know what's wrong with Naruto. Tsunade finally remembered about Naruto, right? I want you to read his report, while I do a diagnosis. Shizun, and Tsunade went to work. Shizun grabbing the report, and reading through them. While Tsunade walked over to Naruto. Putting her hand over him, her palms turned green. Slowly she started to hover her hands all over Naruto, strange. There's not any physical damage that could have caused him to become unconscious. 
as well, no signs of poisons, and quickly moving her hands to his head. She began to concentrate, closing her eyes, then suddenly her eyes flung open. This is worse than I thought, exclaimed Sunaid. Kashina and Minato moved closer with alarm. What do you mean worse than you thought? asked Kashina. Well, if one is unconscious, and there is no sign of physical damage, that means that they must have gone through mental damage. Right now Naruto's mental state is shattered. It's actually, as bad or worse than the Uchiha kid, that's why he's unconscious. Explained Sunaid. What do you mean by something as bad as Sasuke's? What happened to him? Asked Kashina frantically looking at Minato and Sunaid. Minato just looked down, already knowing what had happened to young Sasuke. Sunaid just sighed, Itachi, his brother, caught him in an unbreakable which made him watch Itachi massacre the clan. He explained that in the 72 hours past, while in real life it was merely 5 luckily I was able to take him out of his unconscious state, since it was only a. Yet, it still caused a lot of damage to his personality and mental state. Kashina just gasped she was still having trouble accepting the massacre, yet for Itachi to do that. She just shook those thoughts away, then can't you do the same to Naruto? No, what happened to Naruto wasn't. It was the real thing. It would be wiser to allow his brain to catch up with the information. Though if he doesn't wake in 6 days, I'll wake him from his unconscious state. For now it's wise to just let him rest, and hope whatever happened doesn't affect him too much. Sunade gave Naruto a kiss on the forehead, and she and Shizun headed out to check on other patients. Kashina and Minato just stood there watching Tsunade leaving. Minato just looked tired and filled with grief. Kashina looked like she was gonna burst into tears again. What type of mother have I been lately? I keep saying I want him to come back. Though what have I really done? I've just kept offering to train him. I don't even know what he really likes. Now you're in so much pain. Yet I can't do anything because I don't really know much about your life. Minato interrupted her thinking, Kashina, it's best if you go back and rest. It's been such a long night we're just gonna have to wait for him to wake up. No, Kashina replied. Minato was a bit taken back. Kashina would usually agree with him Kashina you have to remember that Naruto isn't your only child. You also have to worry about Mido. No, I'm not leaving. Just like Mido isn't our only child. Tell me Minato do you have any ideas what could possibly have caused Naruto into this state? To get put in this mental state his worst fear must have come true. Tell me Minato, do you know what he is scared of the most? Seeing that Minato had no answer, you can't tell that. Can you even tell me what his favorite color is? Dreams for the future? I can name all of Mido's, but none of Naruto's. No I'm not leaving. Crossing her arms, and sitting down by Naruto. Minato just sighed, then suddenly all the guilt went rushing at him. He knew what Kashina had said was totally true. He actually wanted to stay too, but he had to remember that he was too. You're right. I don't know any of that stuff. You can stay with him until morning, but if he doesn't wake up you'll go back and rest. I need to get some rest, then I'll check up on you in a few hours. With that Minato disappeared in a flash. Kashina just sat in the chair by Naruto, waiting for her son to wake up. Three days later. Naruto's mind. Naruto, you were like a little brother to me. Remember I will always love you like one too. Naruto heard and watched himself kill Shisui over and over and felt like he had watched this a million times, yet he still couldn't process the information. It was like every time he watched it, it was a new memory. Then suddenly he heard a voice, move on. Naruto cocked his head. In front of him was an illusion of Shisui, wake up Naruto you can do it just move on. Hospital room. Naruto suddenly jerked awake. Sitting up he looked straight ahead. Looking to his left he noticed the sun was high in the sky. It was just a bad dream. Then suddenly Naruto looks down at what he is wearing. He notices he is in the same outfit as the dream. Clutching his head it can't be unless reaching for his pouch he digs around. Then suddenly his hand lands on a slightly bigger scroll. His breath suddenly gets much more shallow. Slowly pulling it out, he notices it is the same scroll Shisui gave him. Clutching his head once more he screams no. Kashina woke from her sleep in shock. Looking up she noticed her son was clutching his head with a scroll in his hands. Quickly getting up she heads over to him, and tries to get a grip on him honey, please calm us all right you're safe. Naruto looks over just noticing his mom. Though it wasn't enough to calm him down. As she tried to embrace him in a hug he pushed away, and got off the bed. Oh no, he can't be dead falling to his knees, he stops clutching his head. I didn't mean to I swear. Suddenly he burst into tears. Who's dead? What happened to you, Naruto? Thought Kashina, as she tried to calm down her son. Then suddenly Tsunade burst into the room, what's going on he looking down at Naruto. She rushes over to him, and Naruto calms down. It wouldn't do you any good if you just collapse again. Naruto's crying ceases. He rushes over to Tsunade, and embraces her in a hug. Grandma Tsunade I didn't mean to. Tsunade just hugs him back. Looking at Kashina she gives her a questioning look. Kashina just shook her head. He just woke up like this. I don't know what he's talking about. Tsunade, having understood, grabs Naruto, and brings him back to his bed. Okay Naruto. Calm down. Then tell us what happened. 
Naruto, having understood what she said, began to calm down. What happened to you last night Naruto? Asked Tsunade. Naruto looked at her, and stuttered back, Shisui attacked me. Then I defended in word when through shaking his head to compose himself, he gulped, and continued, I stabbed him with my sword then he died, but I didn't know it was him. I swear you have to believe me. He had a mask. Tsunade's, and Kashina's eyes went wide, Shisui did this was he with Itachi. Why did Shisui do this? Asked Kashina, was he with Itachi? Naruto's eyes went wide with the mention of Itachi. Then he remembered what Shisui told him. Did Itachi really kill his clan? Tsunade, and Kashina gasped, Naruto, we never told you about that. How did you know? Naruto closed his eyes, so, Itachi really did it. Ichi was about to respond when he remembered what Shisui told him you can never let anyone know the truth. He told me before he died. Replied Naruto taking a huge breath, though I thought he was just making up lies. Honey, why did Shisui attack you? Asked Kashina. Naruto just gritted his teeth, I don't know. He said he wanted to test me. He said he was already dying. So he wanted to see how far I had progressed. Naruto's mind was racing at a million miles per hour, do I tell them? No Shisui said not to though he did this to me. Why? Tsunade looked at Naruto with full sorrow nerd. Can I just go home? I want to get some rest. Interrupted Naruto. Has the Chiha funeral passed? Yes, yesterday Kashina replied. Naruto wanted to go pay his respect to Shisui, but at the same time he felt so bitter towards him. Okay, can we go mom? Said Naruto, as he headed for the door. Tsunade just sighed I'm not supposed to let you go but I'll make Naruto take it easy. Naruto stopped, as he opened the door, and in a monotone voice he replied okay. As Kashina and Tsunade saw Naruto leave. A face of worry crossed Kashina and Tsunade. Kashina followed behind his son. Many hours later at the cemetery. The whole village had heard the unfortunate news about the Chiha clan. That Itachi had massacred his clan, and had only spared the children. There weren't many, just 13 of the 67 of the Chiha clan. A huge funeral had been set by the Hokage. Not all the village attended, but a majority of it did after his mother told Minato about Shisui's death. Minato proceeded to add him to the graves. Which left Kashina baffled since Shisui had tried to kill Naruto, but Minato wouldn't explain it to Kashina. Naruto was just thankful he hadn't seen his dad all day. He didn't know what he would do if he saw him in front of him. He was holding so much anger towards him. As well he got really ticked off when Mido greeted him. She just asked if he was alright, and left. From that moment he decided to just stop trying. Even though Shisui had asked him to, he just couldn't stand it anymore. The only reason he had attempted to even talk to her was because Shisui had asked him to. She never tried to say anything back, and took him for granted. Though the only person he really couldn't complain about was his mother. He was very grateful she was there. He probably would have just stayed in his room if it wasn't for her. For the first time in his life he actually felt like his mother cared. She had actually asked him what he wanted to eat. I mean asked him. As well from what he heard from Mido's complaining she stood by his side all three days. He couldn't help but hug his mother. For probably the first time in his life he hadn't felt overlooked. Even after all of this Naruto had decided he needed to go cemetery. He felt if he could find closure it would be there. Naruto was walking down the road to the cemetery. On his way he could see people looking at him. Some waved because he was the son of the fourth Hokage. Yet he saw some kids point at him and snicker. Naruto couldn't help but feel a bit angry. They're laughing at me just after what happened. Though I have been in coma for three days. Naruto just sighed, I'm such a mess I don't know whether I should be angry or that I wouldn't let get to me. Are now getting to me. Turning the corner he walked into the cemetery. As he walked down the rows of graves. He made his way down to the Chiha Memorial. As he reached the place he began going down the rows, which were alphabetical, until he made his way to the S's. Taking a deep breath he made his way to Shisui's grave. Naruto looked down. He knew that there was nobody in the grave, but he couldn't help but fall to his knees. As he stared down the grave began to cry. Why did you do this to me Shisui quietly asked Naruto, tears flowing down his face, why did you have to die? Naruto couldn't help but cry. What Shisui had done, no what he had done was just too much. He didn't know how to be angry at himself or at Shisui. Shisui said he did this for him, but he didn't know what to think. Naruto just stayed quiet, as he thought to himself. He didn't notice a small figure walk up to him. The little figure walked up to Naruto, and whispered, excuse me sir. Naruto turned around, and noticed it was a girl with black hair. She had the same dark eyes, as all the Chiha. Though they were a little puffy. Naruto slowly moved to the right, curious about the girl he stayed with. Naruto taking a better look at her noticed she looked a lot like Shisui. Though in a feminine way. He watched, as the girl placed a white flower on top of his grave. Naruto couldn't help, but asked. Have you ever heard of Shisui? The girl just looked up. As she tried to speak her voice choked a little, ESS, he was my big cousin. He would sometimes look after me because mommy would sometimes be out on missions. He was pretty funny, and nice. I miss him, and mommy the most. 
the little girl began to let some tears flow out. Naruto suddenly felt like running away. He really wasn't good with little kids even though he was a kid. Though suddenly Shisui's voice crossed his mind, take care of the next generation of Ichiha. Naruto took a deep breath. Maybe this is why Shisui did what he did. I can do this. I won't run away. Yeah he was pretty funny wasn't he, but I don't think he would find it very funny to see you cry. Replied Naruto. What's your name by the way? Are you a little young to be here alone? My name is Uruka, and I'm five. So, I can take care of myself replied the little girl, finally wiping the tears, as her fiery attitude started to bubble her reaction. Naruto finally did something he hadn't done in days, he smiled. Fiery, and confident just like Shisui. Naruto blinked at that thought. Wasn't he just confused about Shisui a minute ago? Why was he so happy with this? Getting rid of the thought he teased the girl, I don't know you look like a squirt to me. Haruka just pouted you can't call me a squirt. You're probably like 10. I'm 11 by the way. So tell me why are you here alone? Asked Naruto. Haruka's little pouty face turned into a sad one. I wanted to bring Shisui a flower, but the lady taking care of us wouldn't let me. So I snuck off. Naruto just sighed even though he had done the same I don't think the lady will be too happy with you. As well she must be worried sick. Haruka replied, I don't care. I said I was gonna say bring Shisui a flower, and that's it. By the way, how do you know so much about him? Who are you? Naruto made a little choking sound. He had a little trouble responding, but he replied, he was my sensei, and he was my best friend. Naruto's eyes widened at what he just said. Though suddenly his mood changed, yes he is my best friend. Regardless of what happened. I guess that's what I needed to confirm. Yeah my best friend. My name is Naruto. Finish Naruto. Haruka's eyes went wide, you're Naruto. Wow Shisui told me about you, he said that you were a really good ninja. Haruka looked at her feet, can I ask you something? Naruto looked back a bit curious at her change of attitude what? Well, my mommy didn't like you very much. She thought that an Ichiha should teach an Ichiha. So why did Shisui teach you? Innocently asked Haruka. Naruto just gave a loud sigh. He really didn't like when the Ichiha would criticize Shisui teaching him. Well the first reason was because Shisui believed I was a lot like him. As well as me, and Shisui, we were like no, we were well if you believe an Ichiha can only teach an Ichiha. Well. Closing his eyes for a second he reopened them. Unaware himself he had shown the girl a fully matured Shiringen. The little girl gasped, wow you're an Ichiha. Naruto shook his head no, I'm from the Namakas and Uzumaki clan. The Namakas clan are cousins of the Ichiha and Uzumaki cousins of the Senju. Since I have both Senju and Ichiha blood I can activate the Shiringen. So in a way yes I am, but not fully. The girl was still in awe. HOW did you already mastered. My mother said it usually took an Ichiha until the age of 15 to reach its full potential. Only Shisei and Itachi did it early. Naruto looked at the girl confused and mastered. I only have two Tomo and less. Naruto reached for his shoe. Pulling out a small knife. He looked into the reflection. As he saw he let out a loud gasp Shisei you did this for me didn't you? Naruto let out a tear. He had finally understood why Shisei had done what he had done. As he remembered what he had said a long time ago. Flashback no. Naruto was panting, as he was finishing his last exercise. He deactivated his Shuringen, as he caught his breath. He has seen the difference between an immature Shuringen, and a mature Shuringen. Shisui's Shuringen made him look like he didn't have any in the first place. So he couldn't help, but ask, Hey Shisui, how did you mature your Shuringen so quickly? Shisui just looked at him, Naruto, there's no easy way if that's what you're asking. Though there are two ways in which one may reach the third, and final stage. That piqued Naruto's interest two ways. Shisui nodded his head. Yes, one of course is to train it to the limit. Though the second is similar to just activating the Shuringen. A normal Ichiha could activate it when they are in great danger. Though for you it's a little different. Naruto asked him, what do you mean? Well not to bring back bad memories but you activated your Shuringen because of great grief. The betrayals of your parents was enough emotion to help activate them. Replied Shisui. Naruto asked, I understand that but why is that? Well, you see when one isn't a full-blooded Ichiha, it takes more than danger to activate the Shuringen since they don't have enough of the gene in their blood. So it takes a deeper emotion. Such as grief and anger. Replied Shisei. Though unless you want to lose someone precious. I think you should just stick to the road of hard work. Naruto waved his hands in the air, come on Shisei, you know I'm not power hungry. As well I can never cause intentional harm to those around me. Shisei just smiled at him, good because I just remembered. I wouldn't be able to take you out for ramen. I have a mission. Then he disappeared in a proof. Naruto just blinked, then yelled, Shisei. Flashback no release. Naruto couldn't help but cry. He had finally understood. Shisui knew he was gonna die. So he made sure his death wasn't in vain. He made sure Naruto would be strong enough. Yes he had found his closure. Though for a moment he forgot about the little girl. I'm sorry I brought back bad memories. Please don't cry. Begged Haruka, as she too was about to cry. 
Naruto compassed himself not wanting to see the girl cry again. Don't worry Haruka. It's alright. As he embraced her in a hug. Why don't I take you back to the orphanage? Haruka shook her head I don't want to go back yet. It's really lonely there. All the kids are at least 3 years older than me or 2 years younger. Naruto just thought he hadn't lost all his family like her. He could understand one thing, loneliness. Naruto had felt it his whole life when Shusui was away. Whether it was at school, home, or at the park. If he wasn't with Kakashi, Tsunade, Itachi, or Shusui. He was usually all alone. Suddenly her stomach growled. The little girl blushed a little at the loud sound she made. Naruto allowed a smile to escape his lips. I guess we don't have to go back right away. How about we get something to eat? Haruka twiddled her fingers. I don't know, but only if it was ramen. Naruto just smiled. Well, lucky you, I know the best ramen shop in town. Haruka's eyes went wide, really. Mommy wouldn't let me have a lot. She said it was unhealthy. Haruka's eyes narrowed as she thought about her mother. Naruto saw this. Well, that's what I thought so too, but the old man there has this special soup for me. It's filled with vegetables and lots of good meats. It's quite healthy actually. I bet your mother would have approved. Haruka looked at him, really. Well, let's go. Grabbing him by the arm she dragged him out. Though before she did he gave Shisui's grave one last look and smiled. Then I looked back at the girl. The little grieving girl he had seen a moment ago was now all smiles. It was like even if the world stopped spinning her smile wouldn't fade. As they raced to the shop, he couldn't help but to laugh with her. He was only 11, but he felt kind of silly. Naruto and Haruka sat down in the stands. Naruto called out AM2 training specials. The brunette girl faced them, coming right up to Naruto. As well, who's the girl? My name is Haruka. Answered Haruka for Naruto. Aim laughed a little at the hyper girl. It seems Naruto you have found your former self. Naruto just sighed, and Haruka pouted, I wasn't that bad was I? Oh, Naruto, you used to be such a hyper kid before you started training. Even I couldn't handle you. Replied Aim as she disappeared into the kitchen. Haruka looked at Naruto. Hey Naruto, what does she mean former self? Well, you see I used to be a lot like you Haruka. Always hyper and brash, replied Naruto. I'm not brash, screamed Haruka. Naruto just smiled, whatever. Haruka stopped her pouting, you know Naruto you aren't that bad. Especially since you bought me some ramen. No problem Haruka. I know you're having a little trouble, replied Naruto. No, it's not just that. You've been the first person since the incident to actually do something. I mean people say they're sorry for me, but they didn't go out of their way like you did, said Haruka as she let out a tear. Reaching for a hug, so thank you. Naruto returned the hug a bit. As I said, no problem. Haruka, whipping away the tears, couldn't help but ask, Naruto, maybe you could come visit me tomorrow. It's a bit lonely at the orphanage. So maybe. Naruto looked at the little girl. To be honest he really didn't want to get too attached to her, since what just happened with Shusui, but he couldn't say no to her sorrowful face. Sure Haruka, as well once you start becoming a ninja well if you become a ninja, I could train you too. Haruka's face lit up at Naruto's response, thank you Naruto. And yes I want to become a great ninja like my mom, and Shusui. Suddenly Aim appeared, here's the food. Putting down two bowls, Haruka be a little careful because it's hot honey. Well, time to eat. Stated Naruto, as he pulled out a pair of chopsticks, with Haruka doing the same. As Naruto was halfway through his food. Thanks a lot big brother Naruto. Said Haruka. Naruto choked on his food. What did you say? Haruka was a bit nervous at his response. Well my mother said that her older brother always took care of her, and you're taking care of me. So you're kind of like my big brother. Looking down into her bowl, I'm sorry if I upset you. I. Naruto's grin was so white it almost fell off his face. Maybe he can't find his sister in Mido, but Haruka I promise to protect you. It's fine Haruka. Naruto returned to eating his food, perfectly fine. Haruka smiled and reflected, maybe I didn't lose all my real family in massacre. Alright big brother. As she returned to eating her bowl. Unnoticed by her, Naruto stared at the space in front of him. It really understand why you didn't know about Shusui. Looking at Haruka, to protect those close to you. To protect Haruka, the rest of the Ichiha kids, and me so this is the will of fire, and I will be the next to carry the torch. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.